Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is called Trick Shot by Wolf Design. It's made by Nikita Karlov and Eridem Nikipurdov. I'm probably saying that wrong, I apologize. But regardless, Trick Shot is a game in which you are pressing your luck. Now, when I first looked at the game Trick Shot, it seems like a hockey game in which you're trying to move this little puck around, utilizing your miniature characters, trying to score goals. And you are, but it's not actually a game in which you're using dexterity and flicking and movement, but in fact, basically deciding how many die you want to roll and how many actions you want to take. When you start off taking your first action, you roll one die. And then when you choose to take your second action, you have to choose a new character and roll two die. Now, as long as you don't get these X's, you're going to be set. You're going to be doing well. However, at a certain point in time, you're going to have to roll a bunch of these die. It's very likely to get X's. Luckily, you're also going to get little tokens or little boards here, which are going to give you extra chances to re-roll all the die that have symbols on them, provided you got an X or you didn't like the outcome of your roll. And if you utilize all of them, well, and you still bust, you're going to be in trouble. Now, if you choose to no longer take actions, you can stop and refresh all of those tiles and thusly keep yourself going on, keeping the motion flowing, if you know what I mean. However, at certain points, you're probably going to want to take a chance and try and score a goal, in which case you might have to risk having to re-roll the die up to the point where you no longer can re roll die and it can turn out to your benefit or maybe even a negative as well. Regardless though, the game is fairly simple, plays out a number of rounds and you're trying to score as many goals as you possibly can in the game Trick Shot, which I'll show you down below as well as a brief example of how to play and what you can do in the game. So here is the game Trick Shot and it's set up for two or four players and by that I mean that you're playing a 1v1 game, however if you want you can actually go ahead and play a 2v2 by having one person join another person as a team. And players are going to have separate teams, there is going to be the red team over here and the blue team on this side, as well as each team is going to get these little cardboard cutouts to place in their little starting box areas here, these will let you basically re-roll whenever you have a failed die attempt or don't like what you rolled. There's also additional characters for additional rules and variants in the game. As you can see here, there's the goalies here, there's the starters, there's these big guys here called, uh, let's see, defensemen. You're going to have the center here, the wingers as well. And then there's additional cards too for additional variants of play. This is the trick shot counter and it's going to tell you how to score victory points. And when you do, you simply move this around here to dictate the points scored throughout the game. And then you're also going to have the tracker. This will indicate the number of rounds and you can play a number of different rounds in a game. So you can go all the way through this and keep going or simply be done with that depending on how long you want the game to last. They're also going to come with these six die but realistically you might roll more than six so you might have to re-roll some of these dies as well because you're utilizing these during the time in which you're going to be taking additional pressure luck actions if you want. The game starts off with both players rolling a number of die and then the player who is able to successfully roll the most symbols that are either pucks or blue symbols, and in this case would be this player here, will then get to go first. Basically the puck dropping down on the ground and then it shows that this character here has possession. And then from there they're going to take actions. You'll choose a character and then you'll take your die. So on your first action you're only going to use one die. The next time you want to use another action, you're going to simply choose another character that isn't the previous one you chose and take an action with them and you're going to use another die. Third action, another character, which can be the one that you previously used, and there'll be three die. Four, five, six, up into the point where you no longer uh, choose to want to roll die. If you get past six, you'll just simply use these six, you'll roll them, then you'll take extra die and you'll roll them again to determine the different, uh, different symbols you can get on the board. Now, in any case, there are certain actions you can take. One would be to pass, and you can always pass in a horizontal or vert vertical way. So you can pass it like this, or you could pass it up or to the side. You can also choose to move. So, for instance, I could choose to move this character here, and you can move diagonally, horizontally, or vertically. And then there's other things like stealing the puck, there's trying to score a goal, and other interesting ones for the variants. But for the main part, there's moving, there's stealing, and there's going to be passing and shooting. When you roll the die, so for instance, if I wanted to have this character go first, simply roll the die, and as long as it doesn't give me an X, I can simply take that action as a pass. 
Each character has a different speed on them, and speed will indicate the number of spaces that person can move. And in this case, this character can move up to three spaces, and he can go horizontally or vertically or diagonally. And we'll go one, two, and three. From there, I'll take another action, but remember it's another die, so I'll take this one here, and maybe I'll choose to pass it from here to here. So we'll roll and see what happens. Ah, oh, I got an X. What that means is I'm done. I'm gonna have to switch. However, I can use one of these, flipping it over, to then re-roll any die that show a symbol on it, and I'll re-roll. No X, I can then go ahead and pass over the puck. And then I have to choose another character. Now, in this case, I can actually choose him because this character wasn't acted upon previously, but it would cost three more die. And as you can see, that's kind of how it functions, right? You're moving across the table. Now, when you're trying to score, maybe something like this, you can then roll your die, so maybe this is the fourth action, I can roll the die, and as long as I didn't get an X, I can go ahead and shoot it, and it can go in. However, uh, there are instances in which you're going to have you rolling these blue symbols here. Blue symbols will let players react after an action, allowing them to move their characters a space, in which they can kind of block you. You're also not allowed to shoot or to um, take any kind of action other than to pass uh, or move if you are blocked, and you're blocked by a character being on the any of these areas here so up down left or right of a character then you cannot take the action to shoot and pass so you have to do certain things that will facilitate you to get your actions done now of course when a goal is scored you're simply going to go ahead and start back in the middle if at any point in time maybe the character has the puck here and they lose control of the puck any characters that are here are going to have to actually move behind these lines here so you can only control a uh, you can only control characters over a blue line in the offensive area, provided you have the puck. But as soon as you lose that, any characters obviously are going to have to go back. In which case, the same will be said for the other player as well. Now remember, if you run out of these, so you rolled three times red, and you're on your fifth action, right, and you want to re-roll again, you can do that, but if you get another X, your turn passes. Which means on your next turn, you're going to have these forfeited. The only way you're not going to forfeit these is on, like, your turn. Let's say you rolled uh, one, two, three, and you did four four actions and maybe you did two re-rolls you can choose to pass instead of taking another action when you choose to pass you'll simply reset these and this will allow you to have additional actions that you can take for the next period in time in which you're moving around but you have to determine if that's what you want to do or not additionally there's these extra cards here which are going to give you different things you can utilize like here free poke when opponent rolls an x and you'll be able to utilize these action cards that let you do certain things as well as arena cards as well they'll have certain rules and statements on them as well but for the most part the base game is just simply moving, pressing your luck, attempting to pass and whatnot. And I know I didn't explain it fully in detail, but I think it gives you a good enough idea of how the game is played, in which case how you're moving around. Which originally, what I originally thought was it was something like this and you'd actually have to pass the puck around and whatnot in dexterity, but it's actually not. It's just a push your luck style game, utilizing die and of course movement and tactics all in one. All right, so let's come up and talk about the game. Tactics meets push your luck in the game Trick Shot. Originally, I thought this game was a dexterity game in which players would be flicking and passing this puck along positioning their characters in a tactic style fashion but in fact it is like I said rolling dice and then moving based on how those die roll there's of course additional rules which will associate with the puck and with the directional arrow sometimes characters will break out into fights other times characters are going to attempt to shoot and roll too many X's, in which case the puck could bounce off, it could have a, the goalie catch it or in fact it could move in a completely random direction if you roll poorly now of course rolling poorly is your decision because if you have the opportunity to not roll seven and refresh you'd rather probably do that than attempting to keep going but if it's one more roll to satisfy the condition of simply getting a goal it might be worth it but that's the risk you run in the game trick shot Additionally, there are, like I said, arena cards and line cards. Arena cards function with the home and away team, where you have to select one of those first, and these things will interact with the game modes during the round. Line cards you'll be getting previously before the game begins, and you'll use them like action cards, in which you can play them on your turn. They will give you certain benefits and rewards as you choose to play them, as well as additional characters. But the game is very simple to start off with. It's very simple to understand. It just comes down to how you want to go about doing it. And previously, as I said too, if you're checked, which means that you have a character that has the puck and somebody is next to you in a uh, horizontal or vertical way or fashion that means you're checked and you can only pass or shoot when that happens you're not going to be able to move and or do a couple other things as well but you'll have to utilize the knowledge of how you want to move your characters and based on what might happen to kind of predict how you want to set up your arena now pushing all your characters into the offensive line is a great idea as long as you control the puck but if you lose that 
you're going to then push all of your characters back, thusly forfeiting the actions you took to get up into that offensive position, which makes sense in the game of hockey. If you've ever played, that is actually how the game works. This does feel like a hockey-style game attached with a little bit of uh, random uh, stress where you're attempting to try and get what you want to get where you want to be. It also has that reaction timing where you're actually moving characters after an action takes place based on how poorly your opponent rolled. The only thing that I kind of wanted to see more so with this one is I like the fact that when your opponents go to shoot, there is that reaction movement, but it happens after the action, so you would in fact score the goal before the other player would react. I actually kind of like the idea of being able to react to the goal being shot, in which case you can then move the character and prevent the goal from being hit. Kind of gives it that like back and forth feel. But alas, I understand how challenging it is just to make goals in this game as it is. If you can score in a single game two and even maybe three goals, you're doing a very good job because it's quite intense and quite challenging to uncheck yourself, pass the ball where you want it to go, and possibly score as well. The quality of the components is great. They spend a lot of time making it look good. The board itself looks great. The colors feel great. The miniatures are really high quality. It reminds me of Simon style miniatures. Thick, durable plastic, along with bases that have the different colors for your characters so you know which ones are which. And the advanced rules of the game is nice as well. I didn't talk about them too much, but I kind of give you an idea of how they play. Adding in different aspects of toughness when characters get into fights with each other and the additional die uh, side, which is going to be like these X's here that you can use for fights and whatnot. It's kind of an extra little thing that you can have. The base game plays just great for families, and if you want to play a more interactive game with older adults, I would definitely suggest checking out all the advanced rules after just getting a very basic understanding of the main game and how you play it. Overall, nice game. Holds up a lot of table space. If you got a big table and you enjoy enjoy tactics games with push your luck, you're going to want to check out Trick Shot. I had a lot of fun with this one. I think it'll make a good live streaming game, so I'm hoping I'll be able to play this at some point on my live stream because I think people really enjoy seeing this play. Overall, a solid little game that I strongly suggest you take a look at if it sounds like it's for you. Remember, trick is push your luck, so it's going to be a little frustrating for people who don't get where they want to be, and on the occasion, the die rolls are never going to be in your favor. That's just how it works, especially for me at least. But regardless, take a look at the game down below if you're interested in picking it up.